we're at a boiling point. Prevention is no longer an option. That ship has sailed, so to speak. Containment and even extreme measures are the only way forward for survival. Okay, let's bring in Laura Trump, Trump 2020 senior advisor and host of the Right View podcast. Laura, good to have you. So the monologue was about all these European countries that thought it was such a great idea to take those Middle Eastern immigrants in until they started to riot and rape and do what they do. Obviously concerning for our southern border, your thoughts. Yeah, well, this is all, all the more reason that people are now starting to wake up, and even some people who never thought they would say it say Donald Trump was right. This is something that, if you remember, Eric, the day he came down the escalator and announced in 2015 he was running for president of the United States, that was basically the pillar of, of his entire announcement speech that he was running for president. It was about securing our southern border and making sure that we were protected as a country. And he caught a lot of heat for it, if you remember. And then, of course, we remember him putting up the wall and building the wall. And uh, obviously, we do remember back not too long ago when under Donald Trump as president, we had one of the most secure borders America has ever seen. Obviously, we've gone 180 degrees the other way. But it is all the more reason, I think, that people are very concerned in this country, and rightly so. We have no idea who has come in through our southern border. We have no idea whether they wish us well, whether they wish us ill. All it takes is one person willing to do something that is really horrible to cause a major issue here in this country. Uh, and yeah, for all of those countries around, especially Europe, who said, let's just have a free flow of people, let's bring everybody in, they have had major, major problems because of it. You are hard pressed to find any country that has not been negative, negatively affected by it. Uh, and so I think when we're, we're here in America, it's making people sit back and think back to a day whenever we did one time have a secure border. And then in Ireland, when six people get stabbed and uh, Conor McGregor says that it's got to stop, immigration was out of control, we need to vet some of these people, he's opened up by the I Irish police as some sort of hate speech uh, deliverer. I mean, it feels like we're heading in the same direction. We, we should be less like Europe and not try to be more like them. Yeah, I mean, borders matter. And, you know, it, it's funny because at one time, the, the borders of this country did matter to those in charge. Borders of a country like Ireland matter as well. And we have our own unique system and way of doing things. We need to know who's coming in to our country. And it's a very important thing. Conor McGregor, by the way, I think is probably speaking for the vast majority of people in Ireland. You know, Ireland has accepted six times more refugees than Great Britain has. They right now have 18 percent of their population that has been foreign born now in Ireland. And you have never seen a country with more than 15 percent of a foreign born population uh, actually assimilate these people into their society successfully. So I think he's probably speaking up and speaking out for a lot of people in Ireland at their frustration as to what they've seen go on. We have right now, Eric, a situation where you have a lot of the elites around the world, not just here in America, but around the world, who think we should have this free flow of people, that there shouldn't be any borders. They have this globalist idea in mind. And don't take your eye off the prize. That is ultimately the goal here of all of this. And so I think we're starting to see the negative effects of it all around the world, especially, sadly, in places like Ireland right now. Um, I think it's ridiculous what they're doing to Conor McGregor, of course. Yeah, and, and, and of course, you know, back in the day, people wanted to come here. They'd come here, they'd emigrate here, they'd study to become citizens, they'd come here, or they'd come here because they're being politically persecuted in their home country. Either way, they were, they were vetted if they're uh, being persecuted, but they always wanted to be here, they'd assimilate. Now it's like, these people are flooding through our border and feel like they have the right to do whatever they want in America, and they're not even... I would love to see a test. Name the president. Well, they probably know the president because that's why they came. But name the vice yeah. president. Or you know, how many amendments are there in the U.S. Constitution? I bet you they don't even know what the U.S. Constitution is. Well, yeah, I mean, you have to be part of a society whenever you, you, you know, become a citizen of another country. And I think, you know, no, people are, are starting to see and a lot of even school systems right now where they're teaching things in English and they're teaching them in Spanish because we have had so many people coming from South America, from Central America, from 
from Mexico and just kind of flooding our education system that they have to have a way to teach these kids. I mean, this is the United States of America. We speak English here, but you go anywhere in this country, Eric, and you'll find everything in English. You'll also find it in Spanish. Um, but I think you're right. Look, at the very least, we need a system to vet people to make sure that people are coming here for the right reasons and to make sure that people are able it's, to it's work not, and support that's themselves. That's, that's not xenophobic. That's not racist, not bigoted. It's making sure it's your basic. society stays cohesive and you don't yeah. have factions that, that, that are trying to disrupt what we've built in 245 years. Listen to Joe Scarborough and Mika and the, and the I don't know, I call them the Brady Bunch here with this boxes. Uh, taking a shot at, at your father-in-law for some reason. Mm -hmm. Listen. The crisis we're going through right now where the world could really spiral into World War III, but it's not because a guy who's actually had 50 years of experience, it shows the contrast between a guy obsessed with marketing his brand, a guy obsessed with gestures, a guy who governed by gesture versus, well, Joe Biden, who has 50 years of experience. And when a deal goes sideways on the hostages, he can pick up the phone, he can call, he can get it done. Well, it would be the Brady Bunch, except Alice was smarter than Claire McCaskill. But anyway, your thoughts on them blaming your father-in-law? Oh, my, by the way, we didn't see one new war when Donald Trump was president. He was ending wars. He, but guess what? He wasn't paying a bunch of money to have a prisoner swap, to have a, a hostage exchange. He got people back and he didn't pay a penny for them. It is so utterly ridiculous. I'd like to know, by the way, how much money that group of people was paid by the Biden campaign, because I, I got to tell you, Eric, that's just about the only way I can ever see anybody trying to make an argument for Joe Biden and his foreign policy. Look at where we are. Look at Ukraine and Russia. Look at Israel and Hamas. The Middle East is in shambles. We had peace agreements signed China. in the Middle East when Donald Trump was president. You got China chomping at the bit. Are you kidding me? These people are absolute idiots. They have no idea what they're talking about. And the fact that they think that anyone can't see that very clear eyed right now just shows how far gone these people are. That's Trump derangement syndrome, if I've ever seen it in you my know, life. Mika sips her coffee, though. She sips her coffee <laughs> with that sly smile, smirk on her face. Laura Trump, really good having you. Thank you. Thank you so much.